uh, we certainly don't support in another attempt at a stimulus program when we've got the situation that we do. Uh, if the president's serious about working with us, let's get down to business. Let's stop the politics. Over the last two years since President Obama has taken office, the federal government has added 200,000 new federal jobs. If uh, some of those jobs are lost in this, so be it. Let's get down to business. Let's stop the politics. Our top political priority over the next two years should be to deny President Obama a second term. For the last 30 years, we've seen the rise of a truly conservative economic agenda that most people think of as trickle-down economic policies. Together we will lead our country to new progress and new possibilities. And it's now my honor to sign the first broad tax relief in a generation. We've seen choices that privilege, for example, Wall Street over manufacturing shareholders and investors over workers. Frankly, the people who are already wealthy over the middle class and the aspiring working class. We've also seen a real privileging of campaign contributors over regular voters. So all of that has combined to make up a, a real conservative economic orthodoxy that directed us exactly into the financial crisis of 2007 and 2008. We had no net private jobs uh, gained in the period of the first 10 years of the Bush tax cuts. That's because when you uh, give tax handouts to the wealthy uh, and to investors, more money gets concentrated on Wall Street and the working and middle class families who actually spend in their communities, which is really the engine of our economy, uh, get shortchanged. If you look at the recent Republican agenda, whether it's the debt ceiling or aggressive spending cuts in the short run, these measures have been and will be really quite negative for the current economy. They're going to make the unemployment rate higher, not lower. They're going to be destroying jobs, not creating jobs. The biggest regulatory debate we've had over the past several years has been about financial market regulation. And it's more than clear that a lack of regulation contributed to the current downturn. So in fact, we have a case where weak regulations led to massive job loss. And their policy seems to be to go back to the days when we had less regulation. It's unclear how that creates even a single job. In fact, it's more likely to cost jobs. We were losing 700,000 jobs back in early 2009. After they passed the Recovery Act, um, we started seeing the labor market improve, fewer job losses, and eventually turned into some job gains. Much of it was tax cuts. It represented the biggest middle class tax cut in the history of this country. So much of that money went into the pockets of working and middle class families exactly when they needed it the most. The Recovery Act, for example, uh, created jobs pretty directly through infrastructure, which often meant roads and bridges. And one of the things I did at the time, I was working for the administration, was to go with the vice president to some of these job sites. And you would see dozens of folks out there on the clover leaf on the highway uh, building uh, new uh, construction, uh, new roads, new intersections, things like that. You would also then see the kind of spillover job effects. Those folks all of a sudden would now need to go have lunch somewhere. So you'd be creating another job or two at the diner down the street. We're seeing again and again that a quick and efficient use of this money has been to keep teachers on the job in the face of these big budget cuts. Some of these teachers don't even know that they've stayed on the job, frankly, because mm. of the stimulus dollars. But this is a, a way that many of these ailing states are using your stimulus money, Heidi, uh, tens of billions of dollars of it to keep teachers in the classroom. I think it was very surprising that Republicans did not support the initial Recovery Act because it did have so much by way of tax cuts. About a third of the overall bill was in the form of tax cuts in one form or another. But it seems to be the case where they were for these tax cuts before the Recovery Act. After the Recovery Act, not only were they against it when it passed, but they railed against it even after it passed, saying that it didn't work, saying that it was purely uh, propaganda. He, he and his administration have used what I call voodoo economics. 
Republicans picking up where they left off, blocking an extension of unemployment benefits and small business loans. Where are the jobs? Senate Republicans have blocked a $30 billion plan intended to boost bank lending to small businesses. Where are the jobs? Expect the Democrats to once again try and pass unemployment benefits extension, which has been blocked by Senate Republicans. Mr. President, where are the jobs? And let's look at what Republicans have done in your body, the Senate. Uh, you have blocked lending assistance for small business. Where are the jobs? You have voted against extending unemployment benefits. Where are the jobs? Is that the way to boost the economy? This ain't a talking point. Where are the jobs? I think that from the beginning, conservatives have not been able to put country over party when it comes to getting us out of this economic crisis. And it's so unfortunate because the kinds of ideas that the president has put forward have been, for the most part, quite moderate and bipartisan in nature. Take, for example, the stimulus. The stimulus package had a number of tax cuts in it. You would think that Republicans would love tax cuts. In fact, it had the biggest middle class tax cut in history. But because it was going to be a real victory, uh, a sign of leadership from the president and the new Democratic Congress, Republicans opposed it adamantly. Well, I think when you look at the agenda that some of these conservatives have uh, proposed, it's focused primarily on spending cuts and on cutting regulation. That are the, those are their two key talking points that they use. So right now you're seeing the conservatives really push for exactly what they've been pushing for the past 30 years. More deregulation, particularly on Wall Street, particularly on big companies that are shipping our jobs overseas. Uh, more tax cuts for the wealthiest, more tax cuts for speculators and investors, and not tax cuts for the working and middle class families that are the engine of this economy. And you're also seeing this push to really attack government, when in fact it was investments in our America's people and in America's future that built the great American middle class. We cannot cut our way into reshoring up the middle class. Now, they would probably make an argument that they're targeting the budget deficit, but even there, I really don't think there's much once you get past the kind of smoke and mirrors, because uh, simply by uh, allowing uh, tax revenues to rise on, say, the uh, upper income beneficiaries of the Bush tax sets, you could make very significant deficit reduction, but they won't get near anything like that. So when you're talking about, as Representative Ryan is, cutting hundreds of billions out of government spending in the short run, that's going to hurt job growth uh, and, and make it that much more difficult to get the unemployment rate down and get people back to work. They seem to be operating in a land of economics, which is not generally accepted by uh, other policymakers, by the academic community, um, or even by private forecasters. You know, private forecasters would suggest that a lot of their policies would would cost jobs. So they're very much at odds with mainstream economics. And since a worse current economy hurts the prospects of the president, uh, I would say that the agenda they're pursuing is, is a pretty obvious one. It may be that in fact their number one priority is what Mitch McConnell said, which is to make this president a one-term president. Our top political priority over the next two years should be to deny President Obama a second term.